Hendricks and Armstead's been dangerous on returns in this game. Look, Bakaji has just hit a 44-yard field goal to give the Tie Cats a 16-14 advantage. Armstead from his 15. Up over the 35. And a 24-yard return for Jason Armstead. You know, trying to avoid the turnover at Calgary in the second half. John Cornish, 59 yards of offense. Didn't get a lot going along the ground, as Dave Randorf mentioned. A few catches and blocks from Nick Lewis. There's Kevin Glenn's numbers. You know, in the first time these two teams played back in Hamilton, they didn't have to really throw the ball a lot. In fact, it was one of the better games for the Hamilton defensive secondary. Only 141 yards passing for Calgary. They didn't have to. They had 100 or over 200 yards rushing as a team. Hamilton has done better against the run. Kevin Glenn going to the air, and that oh, was intercepted deep. Well, the safety picks that on. Rob Cote will bring him down. But another turnover by Calgary. It's five in the game. And D. Webb has his third interception of the year. You know, this is a surprising one for Kevin Glenn, who's been pretty good at. Major foul, roughing a passer. Hamilton, number 90. Well, that's coming off the board. The first down. Well, that'll take it off the board. Greg Peach roughing the passer. Take a look. You know, there, there's no question. I mean, defensive players should know by now that once the ball is gone, first of all, you can't push him like that. You can't hit him in the head. There was helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact on the quarterback. That's, I mean, it's no secret anymore. What a reprieve. Peach in on that tackle to stop John Cornish, who hasn't found anything up the middle in this game. A pickup of one. Peach, a veteran. That's a costly mistake. Absolutely. You should know better. I mean, this is, this is a... Uh, just a poor mistake. I mean, right, right here, it was poor decision. He's he can he can now now he just grabs him right. Let when Kevin Glenn throws it here, just kind of grab him around it and hold him up almost. Bad decision takes the turnover off the board. Second and ten for midfield. Into the hands of Maurice Price. Fifty-five yards, Mo Price. Now my guess is that Greg Peach will not want to get too close to George Cortez on the sideline when he gets over there. The Hamilton Tiger Cats had the turnover in Calgary's end. A bad penalty gives the ball back to Kevin Glenn. He hits Price, and just like that. Franklin and Bri wow. Bryant provide the blocks to spring them. Maurice Price, who fractured an ankle in the preseason, finally getting a chance to show his stuff, his first CFL touchdown. And what a turnaround from an apparent tie cat takeaway. Well, they use the pyro here after a touchdown, and uh, <laughs> under these circumstances, yeah. it's a whiteout. Different kind. Yeah. Oh, Stan Peters going to go for two, and that's intercepted in the end zone. Ricardo Coakley comes up with it, and can he bring it back? No, he'll get tackled at the goal line. A little surprise that the Stamps would do that this early. It is a four point. Maurice Price for the touchdown that gets Calgary the lead once again. JR Marquis, my baby Nicole. I love y'all, man. Hey, Price is right, baby. We ain't stopping, baby. Yes, sir. Maurice Price just said hello to Orlando, Florida. Got through the phone book. I think the weather's a little different in Orlando, Florida. There it is, the boot. Siobhan Walker will take that. He slips a little bit there. He gets closed down. Keaton McDougal down in a hurry. Guy from Saskatchewan can handle these conditions. Straight line game in that Maurice Price touchdown. You need two blocks, one here and one here. 
and the receivers get the job done. It's Romby Bryant and R.J. Franklin. Stop it there. Look at this. Blocks made. Boom. One, two, and now it's just goodbye. Inside pursuit. Ray Williams takes the wrong angle. The angle is outrun by Maurice Price, but those two key blocks down the field. Matt Dunnigan talked about it. Puzzled by the two point convert attempt at this stage of the game. But Calgary does have the lead, and Hamilton has a first down on Andy Bantu's first catch of the game. Top Canadian receiver in the league this year. Quiet night so far. Last three games have been big, though. Over 200 yards, three touchdowns, and that's why it's a little surprising that he's been this quiet. Nine second down conversion catches the last three weeks. 15 there for a first down. Burris, some time. Jaguar the catch. And another first down, his first catch. So a couple of guys being hurt from for the first time today. First Van Tuz and now Jaguar, who had the, the drop that turned out to be the interception by Raymond. Yeah, pretty little crossing route on, on Fred Bennett here, but better protection. Blimey talked about this at halftime, that the protection has been an issue. And we saw that in the first half, but, but Burris had some time to get it out there. Up at the 53-yard line, 12 for Jaguar. Another tie cap first down into the hands of Colburn. And he can get dragged down. There's Charleston Hughes once again. Look at Henry Burris and his return to Calgary. Started out well. It's Bakari Grant on a crosser that goes for a touchdown. And the screen pass to Avon Coburn. But as he mentioned to Jermaine, now they've got to finish some of those drives. Yep. Second and seven here. Four man rush, he'll step up. Flag down, Burris would have the first down as he slides in front of the oncoming tackler, but it's coming back, I believe. There's been a lot of teams this year that have had problems trying to contain Charleston Hughes. Holding Hamilton, number 65. The 10 yard penalty remains second down. Pascal Bayer-Jean, the young right guard. Just his second start to the CFL. And, and he, guess who he's going to try and block? Charleston Hughes. Byron in the inside gets Hughes. He moves from outside the end. Malik Jackson took the outside rush. The linebacker put Hughes on the inside and gets the hold and draws the holding call. Cody Husband, who started at right guard, moves to left guard with the entry to Peter Bajowski, who's missed. They take one way into the hands of Williams on the near side. And Chris Williams can't turn it upfield. Deion Raymond will help him up, and the punt team has to come on for Hamilton. Anthony Parker will drop back for the Stampeders, along with Armstead. Oh, trouble for Bartell. Had to do some fancy work to get the kick away. Now, where do they spot this? Looks like an illegal kick. And they'll rule it. Goes out at the 23-yard line. So he didn't make it to the 20. And that's an illegal kick and a penalty against Hamilton. I forgot math and science, too. <laughs> math for me, certainly. But... That's why we're in these unskilled positions. Right. The is Cote with the catch. And a first down, Dean Webb with the stick. But it's a first down up at the 50-yard line. Nice catch. Way to use his hands here. Cote coming from that tight end spot. Rob Cote just going to shoot through the gap, turn over with his hands. Third catch of the game, and it's a nice one. It's right where D. Webb had that interception that was taken off the board. Out to the far side. There's Maurice Price again. Not a 
mounts the tie cat bench. But they, as you mentioned early in the game, moving Price around a bit. And they want to utilize his speed. Well, he showed it on that hit screen. Dave Dickinson's going to go with the hot hand, and he's going to go with 17. Keep feeding him the rock if he's if he's on a roll, and he's on a roll right now. Markway McDaniel not in the lineup, a hamstring problem, and they didn't want to risk any further damage to the former tie cat. Quick hit it. And Nick Lewis, another catch. The leader in yards after the catch, which really surprises me. Not you wouldn't think that's his game. This is automatic, though. If if the opponent, whoever it may be, is going to play his own defense and leave Nick Lewis uncovered, this is automatic for this offense. He'll just sit down right there, pick up that 8, 9, 10 yards, and away they go. He'll do that every time. So he's one catch away from matching a career high. Corner shot of the backfield. And Kevin Ivor pumps him out, but close to another Calgary first down. Kevin Glenn's got the Calgary offense moving. Yeah, and, I, and I've seen a couple of things here from Dave Dickinson's offense. It started with Rob Cote, a split second quick pass from the tight end. This is about, again, one 1,000, two 1,000 balls out of there to John Corner. Same on that hitch to Nick Lewis. The quick game for Dave Dickinson. Three catches for Corner, 65 yards. First down, Glenn into the flat, and Lewis gets pulled down immediately. Brought down by Coakley. What this Hamilton D line is going to have to try and do against this this quick game? This is a lot like Calville plays in Montreal, where if you can't get there sack wise and get pressure on the quarterback because he's getting it out of there quickly, you got to get your hands up in the throwing lane, try and block a couple at the line of scrimmage to give your back end a little bit of help, your DBs. Kevin Glenn, hot hand on the drive, he's five for five. But second and ten. And off corners, finally some room. John Cornish has a first down inside the ten. Avi Khan getting a chance to play for Spencer Wilson, who's injured. He's the left guard. He's going to be point of attack right here. What a pickup he's been for the Stampeders. He takes his man, I believe it's Greg Peach, turns him in. That opens up the inside lane. And on the outside, Stanley Bryant on the kickout block. Well executed by the big boys up front. Newcomer Dominic Harris just signed by the Ticats this week. In at Will Linebacker made the tackle, but it's first and goal at the seventh. Back in the hands of Cornish. Second of the game, 13th of the year for John Cornish. And he has tied Chris Williams for the league lead. Watch the footwork for John Cornish. He tries to change direction. He had to stop his feet and pound him a couple of times just to get back around that corner. And then goes airborne. Up over the top for Ray Williams. I think more yards on that carry than he had rushing in the game. Seven-yard touchdown run for Cornish. Way to get us one. Capping a seven-play touchdown drive. Extra point through the smoke. And when it clears, it will be an 11-point Stampeder lead. They've opened up their biggest lead of this game. Run game starting to open up. Nick Lewis is going to come out and get a block here on Kevin Ivan. And Ivan's got to kind of blow up, the, blow this play up upfield. He's got to come upfield more and doesn't because 82 just turns him inside, lane wide open. And even though John Cornish, because of the snow, had to chop his feet a couple of times, he still had enough time to bounce it. Jones. And Jones. 
Had a good game on the returns. Forced out at the Ticat bench. Now there's been a lot of great receivers in the Canadian Football League. And well, you can make an argument for who's the best. I know a guy on our panel can make an argument for a guy on our panel. And but when it when it comes to the best blocking receiver in Canadian Football League history, my vote goes for number 82, the Calgary Stampeders. Throughout his entire career, there's not been a better blocking receiver in this league that I have seen than number 82. And reverse, got to get something going, but there's early movement, and this play doesn't get off. Under five minutes left, third quarter. And Ticats will have to start five yards further back. Procedure. Hamilton, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Cats need a response. Had the lead into the fourth quarter in the first meeting. Points early movement again. Mark Dial. Yeah. The right tackle out of his stance prematurely. Well, he saw that same blitz and he saw Charleston Hughes. And that blitz that Jock Climby drew for you at halftime. Where you Procedure. Get... Hamilton, number 63. Five yard penalty remains first down. And that's gave that gave him all kinds of problems early in the first half. So let's show you again. First of all, this guy alone causes problems for a lot of tackles. But on the outside of him is Keon Raymond, number 25. And that's why Mark Dial on, on that right tackle spot moves early because he, he hasn't been able to handle that, that action off the edge. Not a big crowd in the snow, but they're making a lot of noise. There's Colburn. And Colburn not going very far. Peter defense revved up. By the way, Tad Cornegay has moved into the defense on the corner. Guy who started his career in Hamilton, Darius Brooks out of the game. Uh, Cornegay, another good pickup veteran player, and, and he was the backup for Keon Raymond. So they've got a now Calgary hope that neither one of those two gets hurt. Complete Quincy Butler had a shot at the ball. Take a look. Bakari Grant has to get out and around the jam from Keon Raymond, and then he's picked up for Quincy Butler. Is just patient back there. That went right through his hands. Tells boot fielded by Armstead and Barry now field in a hurry. Nathan Kenya. This is our league, is brought to you by Nissan. And well, this is our game. Get one of these a year <laughs> at least, and yeah, man, they're fun when you need the snow blowers out. Remember my first great cup 96 at Ivor Wynn when uh, didn't have much snow removal equipment that day. Guys busy before and during halftime to try and make it possible for the fans to see. And these fans not going anywhere, enjoying the snow. And we usually get some of our biggest rated games for these snow games. The fans have some fun yeah. watching guys playing in the snow. You love it because, it, you know, especially you have HD. If you have HD and that snow's coming across, and guys with, especially those offensive linemen, you can see see their breath and they can and they got the no sleeves on at all playing tough hard nose football and up in the middle it's awesome that time of year and you know playoffs around the corner when it is snowing and dave moyer our stats guy is having a nightmare because he can't see where the ball is. <laughs> Down 
inside the 40-yard line. Well, the leading rusher in the league has become a dangerous receiver as this game has worn on. Well, we've seen these backs come out of the backfield and look like they're going to block first and then release, and Cornish tries to make that same look coming up out of the backfield. He looks like he's going to block, takes a little step, and then screens it out there. He's got some help out in front with Jamichael Dean. And then it's straight lines. He can't he can't make that lateral cut out in the open field because of the snow, so he just runs over Coakley. Unofficially at 99 yards, receiving in the game. 34. Whoa. And a mix-up in the backfield, a malfunction at the junction. And Stamp's fortunate to get back on it. Robbie Bryant shaken up on that collision between he and Matt Walter. Well, Matt Walter came in because here comes Rombie, and Matt Walter came in because John Cornish was tired after that screen run, and this one just the timing off, and Kevin Glenn quick to jump on it. Whoa, whoa. That makes a blooper tape. Yeah, that's candidate for worst play of the day. Second and 12, playing the crosser too low for Nick Lewis to scoop off his shoe tops. Armando Murillo was coming and lined up Nick Lewis just in case he did make the catch and thought twice about it. And it looks like the coach is still doing a burn about the play before. So the punt team will come on. And Mavers challenge to pin the tie cats and avoid the single. It's been a few games since Chris Williams has taken one to the house. Picked away from him here and on the bounce. He's already out inside the 10, so Mabert gets the job done. Well, that's one of the reasons for that. The kickers are doing a better job of trying to keep it away from him, or if he does get his hands on it, make him run it down and catch it on the run so that he's running east-west rather than north-south. After five punt return touchdowns, six total kick return touchdowns, Hunter's got wise started keeping it away from him. Well, a long field for Henry Burris. Trying to climb out of this 11-point disadvantage. 10-point lead early, and they had the football. Looks like they're going to go in and add to that lead when a ball bounced off the shoulder pads of Sammy Jaguar, and Keon Raymond took it 100 yards for a return. And that has changed the momentum of this game. Boy, is it ever. And that, that goes back to that... That philosophy from a lot of coaches that talk about those five or six games that, that happen that can change the outcome, and, and you don't know when they're going to happen. And sometimes it's not the last five. It's, it's a, a play that happens in the first half, but that was a huge one that changed momentum to the score. Second and three, Siobhan Walker will shift it outside. Good work for Walker. Look out. Retreat, and he just hauled down. Keon Raymond saves the day. Certainly saves the touchdown, but an explosive run for Shabon Walker on the final play of the third quarter. An 11 point Stampeder lead headed to the fourth. Big Ben and the Steelers head to Cincy after a tough loss to the Titans. They'll face Andy Dalton and the hungry Bengals squad searching for an offensive boost. Touchdown. And